How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Kingdom Hearts 3. I am finally on my spring break. Thank God, now I can relax. I mean, I have to write a small paper over my break, but it's not going to take too long. But most of the time, I get to just relax, sleep in, oversleep, do whatever I want. And that means... I got some I got some more work to do because I got to keep these Kingdom Hearts 3 videos going. Yes, now that I'm on spring break, I'm going to try and uh, start getting, bringing out a lot more Kingdom Hearts videos. So I already have two recorded now that I'm recording for right now. I'm doing one. I'm going to do the other in a little bit. And uh, my I would love, I, I personally would love if I can get this walkthrough, if I can get it done around my stream time, that'd be great because then it's another thing that I'm, I'm done with. But we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Now let's do another little uh, quick recap. Crap. Wow. I can't talk today. Recap. Um, we uh, saved Olympus, and we no longer have to go to Olympus anymore. We still don't have the power of waking. Um, Aqua is apparently in more of the depths of hell, so that sucks. And uh, we are now have been set by Master Yen Sid to still continue our adventure. So we got some new clothes. And for Sora, while he's progressing through these other worlds, he is going to try and save Roxas by giving Roxas a body and trying to make him a real person again. So what better place to go to to help Roxas than personally my favorite non-Disney related world of this franchise and that is Twilight Town. I love Twilight Town. I was a little bit disappointed that we didn't get to explore too much of it in 3 but I mean come on guys it looks absolutely amazing. Every small detail of Twilight Town is a million times better than what it was in all the previous Kingdom Hearts games. So, I'm not complaining too much. I still love it to death. I just wish, yeah, we just could have had more. But, who knows? Hey, DLC. It's an option. You never know. So now, Sora, Donald, and Goofy have traveled to Twilight Town because they're going to try and find a way to help out Roxas. And I can tell you guys this right now, this video and then the next video I have planned, um, they're a little bit shorter than my other ones just because you really only go to Twilight Town once. I mean, you go back for like a sidestep mission, but you're really not there for that long. This is like really the only time where you spend most of your time in Twilight Town, unless you're going back to the Bistro to help out Remy, but we'll get to that later. So, I kind of, just to make it easier for me, I divided the Twilight Town walkthrough into two parts just because it makes it a little bit more easier for me because I don't have to record as much gameplay. I mean, record over, voiceover so much gameplay, it makes it a little bit easier for me. But uh, probably when we start going back into the uh, Disney worlds, that's pretty much going to change. Because I'll have to try and uh, really plan out how I'm going to do that, but... Hey, I'm on spring break now, so I'm going to try and just keep on rolling with the videos. But for right now, we got to worry about Twilight Town. Then we're in the right place. Roxas, I'm going to find you. And like I said with my uh, the video I said in uh, my last video. Oh, the nobodies are back. All right, let's get to it. Uh, like I said in my previous video, I am going every time I get a new uh, link, link, I am going to show it off. So right now we're about to show off the Dream Eater Summon, and pretty much you summon uh, the Meow Meow Wow Dream Eater, and you can just kind of uh, bounce or dash, and then every time you pounce, he'll get bigger, and then he'll just like create more of an impact with his slam. And then the finish button, he'll just explode, and a whole bunch of other Dream Eaters will come out. So, yeah. Every time I get a new Link, I will show it off at least once. So, you got the Dream Eater one. And I gotta say, I loved Meow Wow in Dream Drop Distance just because of how much damage it would just destroy. It would just destroy every enemy. Like, every enemy. And I, I like that. So, I was kind of glad to see it return. Yeah, we got the entire roster of enemies coming back for three. We've got the Heartless, we got the Nobodies, and we've also got the Unverse. That really only... They only appear in, like, one major world, and then they don't come back to, like, the final world. But even then, I think it fits that world perfectly. So, 
I don't mind it at all. And, you know, it's kind of great. You know, it's this final chapter with the Xehanort Saga. And all the, en every, e all the enemies are coming back. So I thought that was great. And now I'm using the new Her Keyblade I got from Hercules that, for its final transformation, turns into a chariot. And then you can just, like, summon lightning and everything. And I think that's pretty cool. What was that voice? I know I heard it. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. You sure it wasn't the wind? Or something else? I'm pretty sure. Where'd they come from? Huh? Get the ice cream later. Huh? <laughs> what? Hold up. See? Voices. New ones? <laughs> There they are, the what? gang of Twilight Town. Pence, and I know that music too well. These assholes are back. Hey, Sora. Hello, goodbye. Oh. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, this isn't really in particular a boss fight. This is kind of more of a uh, a timed fight or even just like knock enough health out of the thing but yeah we have the final technically the final boss of a fragmentary passage what we're facing but you really only have to defeat like two bars of his health or maybe even three and i think even then it's under like a time limit because you you literally will not see this boss again until the keyblade graveyard so this is i guess this is just like spare the moment but even then i mean when i first saw it, i'm like oh shit we got a this kind of boss fight already all right bring it I, I'm, I'm ready and if i have to give you guys a strategy for this one i'd just say make sure you have the hercules keyblade because then you can just throw your shield and make sure you can get some damage and then really utilize you know team attacks with donald and goofy because i think i yeah i finished it off here then i try and go for a flare force but the reward you get for just getting through this little fight is great and you will get a uh, cure which is really nice i liked how we got cure this early but still, it never hurts to have some healing items. Yeah, see, there you go. And now we learn Cure at MP Safety, which honestly is a really stupid ability. Essentially, MP Safety is where if you keep on casting magic to the brick of being empty, it'll hold off one additional bar, so that way you can use uh, healing. And honestly, I'm just like, you know what? It's just, it's, I don't use it. It's, it was really stupid. But I, I think it might be, I don't think it costs any um, AP. So, I mean, there's that. It's been ages. What? It hasn't been that long. Yeah, that's another thing, too. I don't know if I mentioned this in my past videos, but the whole timeline, I, mean, I think maybe I even mentioned it with Hercules. Again, this game between Kingdom Hearts 2 for, like, how long it's been, it's not been that long. My guess is that's only been like a few weeks or a few months. It's not weird. This is underprecedented. I'm kind of willing to bet it's only been like a few weeks. The creatures from the last time were bright white. These things must be new. Man, I can't wait to get to Sleuthin. We are already done with the school project, silly. And I gotta say, I I I love Twilight Town and I love these three. You know, I love their connection with Roxas. I think they're really great, you know, characters for this town and. Well, it was great to see him again. Actually, I think, um, I want to say they're all the original voice voice actors. I know for Olette and Pence they are, but I don't know. Hayner sounds different. I don't know if it's just for voice change or they got a new actor. But the name sounds familiar. Maybe we bumped into him somewhere. Oh, there's another Himmiki. And yeah, one thing I do show off in uh, Twilight Town, I do show off all of the uh, hidden Mickey locations for Twilight Town because all of the ones in uh, Twilight Town are very, very easy to find. Some can be a little bit tricky if you don't, if you, unless you look at a guide online. But other than that, these Twilight Town's not too bad. So I kind of do you guys a solid and I show you where all of them are. I'm pretty sure I got them. I don't think I'm missing anyone. But, well, we'll just have to wait and see. Friends with this Roxas person. Sora, let us help you track Roxas down. <laughs> really? Sure, he seems like a pretty cool guy. <laughs> yeah, he is. Great, then let's all go ask around town. If alternate us knew Roxas, then maybe alternate other folks did too. 
Mm -hmm. Sora, you three should go to the place in the photo. It's the old mansion. The three of us will cover places in town. I don't know why they didn't even allow... I mean... I get it that we can't go up towards oh, yeah. the station in Twilight Town, but why can't we at least go inside the mansion? I mean... Want to snap a photo while we're all here? Why can't they at least do that? Idea. But, I mean... <laughs> I, I, I can't help it. Like, it didn't really bother me as much because I'm just, I'm blown away by the scenery and I just love the game too much that I don't really just, like, I don't flat out just pause the game and just start yelling at my TV, but it's like, I, I, I just, I don't care, really. I, yes, I want more, I wanted more for this world, but in the end, I, I, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. But hey, that's another reason why I can do this walkthrough commentary, because then I could just kind of let you guys know what my overall opinions are on everything. Everybody smile! <laughs> wow, that came out great. Oh, a lucky emblem. And I gotta say. Lucky emblem. I kind of like that little touch with the hidden Mickeys, just because, just for someone like me, since I've done a Disney couch run, and you know, Disney's just been a part of my life forever, the fact that they brought the hidden Mickey thing in Kingdom Hearts, it, it really does put a smile on my face, just because those things are so fun to find in Disney itself, and I can guarantee you guys right now, if you weren't addicted to finding hidden Mickeys, in Disney, after playing Kingdom Hearts 3, I guarantee you there is going to be people that are going to be finding hidden Mickeys or going to take selfies and act just like Sora. And I can say the next time I do go back to Disney, I will be doing that. Okay, so now we got to head down the old mansion to see if we can get some more information about Roxas and head to the Elder Twilight Town from Kingdom Hearts 2. But first, I'm going to do, I'm going to find some hidden Mickey. I'm going to find all the hidden Mickeys in this area. And I think I, uh, yeah, I don't know why it wouldn't let me wall jump here. I can see the highlighted thing, but it wouldn't let me jump. Um, we're going to find all the hidden Mickeys in this area right here. And then I think I buy Donald and Goofy their first new weapons. Yeah, some of these are really crazy to find, but I, I think it's a great, I think it's a great addition. I like it. But good God, when you go to Pirates and San Francisco, good luck hunting those. And another little thing that they added that I guess a lot of people wanted from this game, you know, they're they're act, you know, like I said earlier, there are actual NPCs that are roaming about talking. Like you, you just walk around Twilight Town, and you were you are bound to hear a conversation between somebody, whether it be something stupid or just something that you know would fit that kind of thing in the town. And now we've got access to Cure, which is great. It's my favorite spell. Now, nah, actually, I mean. Healing is one thing, but if I, like my the one spell that I will spam at any Kingdom Hearts game is Thunder. I think I love Thunder. Thunder, it's so it's got a nice range and it just it destroys everything. And th and Thunder magic in the newer Kingdom Hearts games is just off the charts. Don't forget to mail that off. Yeah, I kind of stumbled with getting around in some place. I was just a little, I was a little bit off when I was recording this gameplay. Let's see. There's another one. Now, the next one that I go after, this one is a little bit tricky. So, what you have to it's in this little theater right here. I haven't seen a movie in ages. And what you have to do is you actually have to watch the little cartoon of like it's just a little cartoon of like the mini games that you can play on like those classic games. You have to watch the movie, and then pretty soon after the movie's over and you see the end screen, the screen will go to black, and then you'll be able to see a hidden Mickey from there. It's a little bit tricky, but I kind of show it off right here. This cartoon doesn't take too long to get through. But yeah, this is one of the many mini-games you can play on the uh, Classic Kingdom as, as a little bit of bonus stuff. Honestly, I haven't played any single one of them on my... On my uh, on my good name, just because I wasn't really that good with those games to begin with, and I, I don't find anything fun with them. And I guess since you don't really need them to uh, 
get the ultimate weapon. I really just, I just don't bother. But hey, if you're into that stuff, then hey, just go, go have fun. It's another bonus thing that you guys get to do just to have fun. So do it. I might have missed a hidden Mickey over there. I'm not sure, but who knows. So this is something new. They give a, I mean, granted, they had a sewer-ish system in the first game, but not really that much. But, I mean, this is kind of new. I like the detail. It looks, I mean, it looks disgusting, but it looks good for a sewer. So I appreciate that. Yeah, as you can see, the sewer system doesn't really go that far. But hey, I mean, it's it, it's it's something new. It's something new. All right, now there are two hidden Mickey's right in this small area. There's got one on the door, and then there's one where you have to climb up there. There you go. Let's see. All right, and now we get to be introduced to our first Pixar character of the game. Huh? And I, I think I'm going to go more... I think I'll go more in-depth with this as we as we get into, like, the Toy Story world. But I got, I, I'm just going to say right off the bat. I'm so glad that Score Enix finally talked to, was able to talk to Pixar and get, you know, be able to use their films in the games. Because I'll tell you guys this right now. I think that they really... They took really good care of the Pixar worlds in this game. I think Toy Story and Monsters, Inc. were absolutely fantastic. The dialogue was written really, really well. And they've already said that for Toy Story, you know, it's canon. So, I mean, I think that's pretty cool altogether. But just the fact with the way that the technology is now, I mean, the Pixar worlds just look absolutely amazing. I mean, and like I said before, there's really only two worlds in this game that I think were just really major disappointments. But one of them, I kind of give them the benefit of the doubt. But, I mean, I guess I was just going to... I can go... I can, You know, I can go later. I can go into this a little later, but I'll just say it now. In case I didn't explain it, you know... With me in Kingdom Hearts 3, let me get this... Let me, let me just say this. The worlds that they selected initially, I loved. I think this was a really great lineup of worlds. But there are two worlds in particular. One of them, I, I don't even, I'm not even counting as a world because you're only in like one particular area. And the other world, I just didn't like the layout of it. And I know that most people, I know a lot of people agree with me on this. But I'll start with the basic one. Like, 100 Acre Wood. That, that should not have even been in this game to begin with. Because, you're, okay, so later in this game... Later in this game, we're going to get the option to complete either Frozen or Monsters, Inc. And after we complete one of those worlds, we get summoned by Chip and Dale and Merlin to go back to Twilight Town because something is going on in the 100 Acre Wood. And not anything like Dire, but we literally just go to Rabbit's House and play three the, the same minigame three flippin' times. And then we give Pooh some honey, and then that that's it. That is all that we do in the 100 Acre Wood. And it shouldn't even be called 100 Acre Wood. It should just be called Rabbit's House. Whoa, what, what is uh, okay, I'll just say right here. This is a really great cutscene. This is actually really cute. But, um, you know, I think it was just kind of pointless. I mean, if it was like the other games where you actually got to explore the 100 Acre Wood, then I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be bitching. But... I just think for the advertisement that they gave it, it that, that that should not ha that was that was bad. Honestly, that could have been DLC right there. I feel like if they didn't tell us that the Hundred Acre Wood was coming back, and then Tetsuya Nomura and Square made an announcement saying, "Hey, we're gonna have DLC ready right off the bat. Um, it's not much. You get to explore Rabbit's House in the Hundred Acre Wood and play three minigames." Okay. So, 
We get to go to Rabbit's house. We get to unlock maybe like a chest or two and some hidden Mickeys and play some mini games. Okay, that's okay. But it just, it doesn't work. It, it, it just doesn't. And honestly, that's, I mean, I find Frozen better than 100 Acre Wood. And I'll get to that in a second. But it's just 100 Acre Wood has no means of being in this game. It's actually the one, one and only moment in the game where I just get so bored that I, I don't care. I do not care at all. But now let's move on to Frozen, because I know a lot of people have been wanting to... Not a lot of people. I think, I, think, uh, I had a, com a conversation with a good friend of mine in Florida about our opinions on you know certain worlds and Frozen in particular. And I can honestly I can say this right now. Frozen as a movie, I love. I love Frozen. I love the movie. I love the characters. Frozen is a big part of my family, whether I choose to accept it or not. I like Frozen. When I heard that Frozen was going to be in Kingdom Hearts 3, I was excited. Who 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 wouldn't be? And I was even more excited that the fact that they got almost the entire pretty much the entire cast to come back and reprise their roles for this world, which is which is insane. It's amazing. That's that's so cool. But here's my big problem with Frozen. It's not with the story. I think the story is just fine, especially, you know, having Larkstein and Arendelle works really, really well. And hearing the same voice actors reprise their roles before Frozen 2 is great. I love how they were able to get that. that that's, that's great fan service, and I love them for it. Thank you so much. But the big problem with Frozen is that the world layout is just so dull. And I actually heard that a lot of people didn't like Tangled and Frozen just because of how dull the world was. But here's the thing, and I'm going to back Tangled up on this because I think Tangled is a pretty good world in this game. Tangled has color. Tangled has variations. You know, you have Rapunzel's Tower. You have a general forest area. Okay. You have a swamp area. That's cool. And then you get like a rocky area where you fight a, a giant horse heartless. And then you actually get to explore the Kingdom of Corona. That's amazing, and it looks amazing too. But in Arendelle, it's okay. First things first. The world shouldn't even have been called Arendelle. It should have been like the Cold Mountains, because that's all you're visiting. You're just visiting mountains. You don't actually go into Ar. I mean, yeah, you're in like the Kingdom of Arendelle, but you're never actually going to Arendelle. You are literally in snow mountains the entire time. And I mean, for combat, I mean, it's all right. It's, I mean, I don't get, I'm not as bored as I would, would be for uh, 100 Acre Wood. But it's like, they could have laid out that world to be much better. And I think a lot of fans would have been a lot happier with that. But even then, I know a lot of people love it anyway. And I and I like it too. I don't love it. I just, I just like it. But here's, here's my, here's my, here's my, here's my thing of what, the, what they should have done. And some will agree with me. If you guys are watching, I know some of you will agree with me. If you wanted to make Frozen's layout better, then let us let us arrive in the game right before Elsa loses her shit. Like, let's show up in Arendelle while it's springtime, and then we go to the coronation. And then we see Elsa lose her shit, and then that's when we head to the mountains to go and find her. But first, we get to actually explore Arendelle. We're getting ready for this big party. And hell, they played Do You Want to Build a Snowman and let it go in the game. So why not, as soon as we get there, we hear Anna in the distance singing for the first time in forever. And, you know, love is an open door. Just, like, you could do that. You did it, so why not add that? And then you've got the mountains, and then, okay, that could work too. And then another thing, too. Okay, one thing I'm going to mention here. I like how they added the original Twilight Town theme from Kingdom Hearts 2. Anyway, back to Frozen. We don't. We also don't even get to explore Elsa's, Elsa's castle. I mean, we can walk up the steps. We get to walk up the steps of the castle. But that's it. We don't get to go inside. The only person who goes inside there is Anna. And even then, that's just in a cutscene. And I'll admit seeing do you want to build a snowman and let it go playing actually in the game by the way i will have to cut those scenes out because of copyright but i think i have a way where i can just mute the volume and i can show you guys the cutscene, but i can just mute the volume but frozen had the opportunity to really be like tangle where there's variation 
but it's like it just doesn't. I mean, hell, it looks like in Frozen 2, just from that little teaser that they explore more areas than they did in the original. And hey, I'm not complaining if they do Frozen 2, because it just looks like from scenery alone, like it's going to have a di different look on it than it did for uh, 3. But even then, the boss fights are great. I love the boss fight with Marshmallow, the Dragon Heartless, and even the Wolf Heartless. That design is awesome. I love that. And then, yeah, just hearing the original voice cast is great. And then I forgot to address the other thing that I know a lot. I think some of my friends hated in the uh, game. The labyrinth that Larxene makes. I mean, it looks cool at first, but it's just bleh. It's just, like, it's nothing very interesting until you get to the end of the labyrinth, and then you get to go back out. Like, that's it. That's it. But... With Larxene interfering with Frozen, I think that works out really well. But, yeah, that's that's just what I have to say on Frozen. Besides Frozen and 100 Acre Wood, every world in this game does a really great job. And Fro Frozen does good for a few things. It's voice actors coming back, the story that it presents, and, you know, the overall look of it is amazing. But as far as the layout of the world... It's just it's it's bad. I I don't I don't like it. I can, I mean, I've seen enough snow in that world, and I I mean I live in the Chicago area, and I'm done with snow. But even then, it's just the layout could have been done better. And that's all I have to say about Frozen. I've been ranting on about snow. We gotta find Roxas, damn it! Crap, man, I'm killing myself. I should I should I gotta stop ranting during these. It's not Crash Bandicoot. I don't want to lose my voice. I have to record more of these. Okay. Let's catch up with story about what we're doing here. So we're trying to get access to the other Twilight Town because maybe it can provide us a clue to help us get Roxas. But apparently, um, we can't access the terminal like we did in Kingdom Hearts 2 anymore. It's blocked, so there's nothing we can do about it. And I noticed that someone had logged in from another terminal. Oh, I need to. I need to take a breath here. Oh yeah, the log terminal. You don't know any slug. Oh, and what? You do? <laughs> I know I haven't got a clue. <laughs> then, uh, who was it that logged in? Oh, hi there. This is Pence. I'm the one who logged into the computer. Good. As long as it's a user that we know we can trust. Yup. But I'm kind of stuck here. Hmm. One of the programs is protected, so I can't uh... run it. Which program? Uh, the transporter to the other Twilight Town. Uh, it's the only way I see Hayner still has that little, little bit of an attitude in him. Another Twilight Town? And a transporter? Okay. I'm also going to be trying to, I mean, I guess I can just kind of say so I can just keep this commentary going for only a few more minutes. But, um, uh, for the rest of my spring break, you know, I want to... There's a sort on there's an SAO book that I want to try and finish reading. It's the last book we have available here in the US before the next one comes out in May. So I'm, I want to see if maybe I can try and finish that. But um damn, I would love to finish up Attack on Titan. Attack finishing up Attack on Titan would be great too cuz I only have like I'm like I'm halfway through the first season. It's still all right in my opinion, but I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to watch all of season 1 before I give before I decide if I'm going to continue or not. Were you able to fix it? Now that our two computers have been successfully networked together, I can take control of the terminal there and change the privileges. And Roxas? Yes. Essentially, this means is that Ienzo or Zexian has another way of trying to get more, some more data on what we can do for Roxas. But as far as that transporter to the other Twilight Town goes, it ain't gonna happen. It, it just ain't gonna happen. Basically... We can decipher Ansem's code more quickly, and we can analyze the virtual Twilight Town while we're at it. Okay, great. I okay, so I think I'm gonna call it for me for this episode right here. I need I need a drink of water or something. I don't want to drink while I'm recording. So I'm gonna end my commentary around here, and I'll see you guys for the second part of Twilight Town. And just I'm gonna record that a little bit later. But uh, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little mini introduction to Twilight Town. We'll be 
Wrapping up Twilight. Oh, damn. I just got Charlie Horse. Shit, shit, shit. Ow. Okay, thank you all so much for watching. Sorry about that. And I will see you in the next part. Have a good one. He was recompleted like the rest of us. But hadn't regained consciousness yet. Then, sometime after Lee left, Evan vanished. Alias and Dylan, the two you knew as Lexius and Zaldin, they went out looking for him, but he's just gone. And I'm starting to worry. Oh? You think he's on their side? I think it's a real possibility. He's a devious researcher. You should be careful. All right. Thanks. Oh no! We got work! I totally forgot! Really? But what about all this? Hey, both are important. We're gonna need some cash to go to the beach. Also, don't forget the pretzels. Gotta buy four now. Hmm? Uh... Oh... I get it. He's thinking ahead. <laughs> Later, Sora. Yeah, see ya, Hainer. Bye, Donald. Goofy. Goodbye! Oh, and since I'm manning the computer here, you guys are in charge of earning my share. No pretzel for pants. <laughs> hey! Hmm. <laughs> <laughs>